Dupont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Our story, Operation Miracle. Our star, Robert Preston. This is a story that happened to a man named Edward Ellsberg, Captain United States Navy. His assignment, perform a miracle. It was early 1942, four months after Pearl Harbor. American flying fortresses were roaring off the runways of England. In the Pacific, G.I.s were hacking a perilous path through the jungles of New Guinea. But our story begins in Washington, D.C., in the office of Captain Edward Ellsberg. Look, Joe, diving's my business, you know that. All right, all right, but for once the Navy hands you a soft bird. On top of the water instead of under it. Now, why don't you relax, Captain? I can't sleep in soft berths. I'm supposed to be a troubleshooter. What kind of trouble can you shoot at sitting behind a desk in Washington waiting for an assignment? Give me a submarine or anything else that needs salvaging, problems underwater, and I know what I'm doing. Well, uh, come in. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. I didn't know you were busy. I'm not. That's the trouble. Oh. Come on in, Johnny. Well, sir, I finally got my papers. I'm glad I'll be working for you. Working, he says. Oh, have you met Joe Hurley yet? You two civilian divers ought to know each other. Oh, no, sir. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Hurley. How are you, Johnny? We three will be working together, if we ever get an assignment. Now, you'd better hop over to administration, Johnny. They'll square you away. Aye, aye, sir. Right now. Well, that boot hasn't shaved yet. He's still wet behind the ears. Well, we were too, Joe. First time we went down. Now, oh, Johnny's a good kid. I asked for him. Uh, well, okay, but I... Ellsberg. This is Admiral Collins, aide, Captain. Yes? The Admiral would like to see you in his office now, sir. So it's important. Very well, right away. The Admiral, I huh? wonder what he wants. Well, Joe, maybe our luck has changed at last. So clean the rust off your diving gear. This may be it. <laughs> called Masawa. No, I've no, never heard of it. Yeah, well, come here. Now, take a look at this wall map of Africa. There's the Red Sea, and that's the port of Masawa. I see. I gather it's important. More than that, it's vital. Before the war, the Italians built Masawa into one of the finest naval bases in Africa. This spring, the British drove them out, but not fast enough. The Italians wrecked the base? Every piece of machinery in the port smashed. And... A 600-foot dry dock sunk in the middle of the harbor. There's where you come into the operation. Oh? Yeah. And the British fleet's in trouble, Ellsberg. And if we can't get them out, we'll be able to lose the war in Africa. They've got a naval base at Alexandria, but the Nazis are bombing it constantly. Well, I can see why they need a new base, but well, why pick on Masawa when it's demolished? Because the closest Allied naval base is at Durban, South Africa. Mm, that's a long haul from the Mediterranean. It's an impossible haul. 4,000 miles. Well, how far is Masawa? 900. And here's where you come in, Ellsberg. You're the Navy's top salvage expert. Remember the S-51? Well, you're the only man we've got to know how to tackle this problem. To raise and float 600 feet of dry dock. Well, that's good news for me, Admiral. I've been on the beach too long. It's a murderous job. Masawa is the worst climate in the world. A steamy living nightmare. But the toughest part is... You'll be fighting the clock all the way. What's the time limit? We don't know. Fast enough could mean victory. Not fast enough to beat. We can't waste a single minute. You're getting the first plane out of here tonight. ground, Ed, and there she is. <laughs> Masawa. Yeah. She sure looks hot and ugly. Well, come on, we might as well get used to it. Johnny. I sir. Watch out for the gear, will you? I sir. Open up, Joe. Let's get out of this plane. Right. Phew. Feel that hot wind. Ooh, the heat straight out of the boiler room. Hook on the landing ladder, Joe. <laughs> there she is. 
Oh. Nothing like climbing down a ladder right smack into an oven. <laughs> Man, if I'd known what we were... Skipper, this place is deserted. Where's the welcoming committee? I don't know. There was supposed to be a British Navy lieutenant named Thornton out here to meet us. Well, there's nobody here. It's like being stranded in a graveyard. Nothing but this creepy hot wind. Oh, look, Joe, across the field. Oh, we're not alone after all. There's a jeep. Now we can't just wait around in this heat. Come on. Let's bum a ride into Masawa. than a naval base. It is, sir. Today's market day. And that's where we find Lieutenant Thornton in a bazaar. He's at the harbor, sir. Just down there. The road's been smashed up a bit. You'll have to walk it, I'm afraid. Okay, Joe. Climb up. End of the line. Yeah. Right with you, Skipper. Thanks for the lift, driver. Go back and pick up the other man in our gear. Right, sir. Come on, sir. Oh, don't we have time for a little sightseeing, Skipper? Get a load of this bazaar. African natives all over the places. Fancy bead necklaces, rugs, baskets. Oh, no, we're not tourists. Come on, let's go find Lieutenant Thornton. We've got work to do. There she is, Captain. What used to be the Masawa Naval Base. Mm, a pile of rubble. Smashed machinery. Not much to work with. Well, Thornton, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. They told me it was bad. Is, is that all they told you? Well, they gave me a rundown on the problem. Including the four cruisers? What cruisers? Captain, four British cruisers. That's all we've got left. They're trapped in the Mediterranean, limping around at half speed, crying for repairs, and no place to go unless they can come into Masawa. All their hopes are pinned on you, sir. I see. Well, didn't the Italians leave us anything to work with? There isn't a single piece of equipment that hasn't been wrecked in one way or another. Mm, a happy picture. Well, we just have to put these machines together again with spit and string and sweat, that's all. I'm afraid that's not all. Our entire labor force is made up of uh, Italian prisoners and unskilled natives. Not exactly hand-picked men, what? So the prisoners will resent us. The natives will have to be taught. Yes, a very pretty picture. Why, come to get the come and return If you are to in the water, thank you for the repulsion. Fun. Yes, Captain. I can't understand this battalion. What are they grumbling about? Same complaint, sir. It's too hot to work. We're all hot. And we're all tired. But we've got to keep on until we get this machine shop operating. Give them extra water and more salt tablets. Yes, sir. Then after we get this shop going, we pull that dock up off the bottom. That ought to give them a whole new batch of complaints. harbor. Half a mile out there, eight fathoms down, is our big fat baby. Six hundred feet of dry dock. Well, lead me to it. <laughs> I haven't been in a diving helmet in so long. I'll, I'll feel like a dame with a new hat. <laughs> I wonder what we'll find down there. Whatever it is, sir, I'll be ready for it. Well, listen to Peach Fuzz. What do you mean you'll be ready for it? Just what I said. Now, listen, kid. Going down there is a man. All right, Joe. Stow the argument. I'm making the first dive myself. But, Skipper, why? Because we don't know what's down there. And until we do, you're not going to walk in there blind. Hello, below. Hello, below. Sing out, Skipper. Sing out. 
What's the matter with his phone? He's been down there a long time. Is something wrong? Well, you never know when you got a man on the bottom of the ocean. Uh, Darnick, how's that air pressure? Don't study, Mr. Hurley. Hell, what's he doing down there? Hello, below. Sing out. Hello, top side. Top side. There he is. Pull me up, Joe. Okay, skipper, up you come. Darnick, start the winch. Right. Give me ten feet. About even. Ten more, handsomely. About even. Okay, now. Slow, steady, all the way. I give you a hand. Now just stand free and clear, Lieutenant. Here he comes. Okay, boys, up to the stage. Now swing him on. Jarnick, unlock the screw joint, right? Okay, Skipper, let's take off this fancy corner. Huh? There we go. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Skipper, you look like you've been in a Turkish bath. Yeah, I have. That water's 95 degrees right down to the bottom. Get me out of this breastplate, will you? Hey, yeah, sure, sure, Skipper. Well, what's the proof? What'd you find? Trouble. Plenty of it. There's a powder keg down there. Underwater? Yes, and we're sitting smack on top of it. But, but the dock, sir. The dock is it. That dock was built in eight watertight compartments. I checked each one. Seven of them have holes in their bottoms big enough to drive a launch through. Only that eighth compartment's intact. But I don't get it. The Italians put demolition bombs in those eight compartments, and seven of them blew. But the bomb in number eight never went off. It's sitting in there waiting just for us. Holy cow. We've got a death trap inside that compartment. Now, if we try to raise the dark vibration, could set the bomb off and blow us all in the next week. Well, Skipper, what do we do? There's only one thing to do. Go back down and get that bomb. If I'm lucky, we can get it to the surface. Johnny, give me my gear. Right. Where do you think you're going? To the bottom, Skipper. With you. And this time, I'm not waiting for an invitation. I'm just going. Joe, do you know what you're getting into? Well, sure, Skipper. And if we're lucky, we bring it off. If we aren't lucky... If we aren't lucky, Joe, you can count on one thing. We won't be around here to talk about it. Cavalcade of America, starring Robert Preston, and now Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. You have to spend money to make money. Well, that old saying is certainly true of industry. Every business firm in America, large or small, buys many things from its neighbors. Just to give you an idea, in 29 DuPont plants located in the states of New York, New Jersey, Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, South Carolina, and Texas, Home area buying for goods and services amounted to more than $123 million in 1951. During that year, payrolls for these same plants came to almost $210 million. These and many other dollars spent locally helped DuPont's neighbors, and at the same time, they helped DuPont to make better things for better living through chemistry. Turn to our cavalcade story, Operation Miracle, starring Robert Preston as Captain Edward Ellsberg. It was June 1942, and the place was Masawa, Africa. A naval base had been wrecked by the enemy. Captain Ellsberg's assignment: perform a miracle. Put Masawa back in shape. 
part of that miracle is happening at this moment, 50 feet underwater. Two men in diving suits, gray, shadowy figures in the mysterious depths of the shark-infested Red Sea, are cautiously edging past the great black hulk of a sunken dry dock. Topside on the diving barge is Jonik. Ellsberg and Hurley are below, in water almost too hot to endure. Two sets of vital lines run from the diving barge to the men on the bottom. One, the life-giving air hose. The other, a telephone line. The divers only communication with each other. The two divers are moving on a slow, tortuous path toward the hatch of compartment number eight. A path leading to an unexploded demolition bomb lying inside that compartment. A path that may lead to a bait with death. Hello, Topside. Can you hear me, Jarnick? Sing up. Topside, sir. I get you to come back. Hurley? You're intercom connected. Do you hear me? Gotcha, Skipper. What's happening down there? Hurley and I are moving toward the compartment. Give us more slack. More slack. Right. We're passing number six compartment, Joe. I'll take it slow and take it easy. I got you, Skipper. Now make sure you don't get those lucky. Hurley, please. What's the matter? Don't move. Hold it right where you are. Shark. The two men stand rigidly, motionless in the murky depths of the water. Their eyes are riveted on the gunmetal bulk of a huge man-eating shark swimming slowly toward them. The gigantic fish nudges the airlines with its long body, and for a long, agonizing moment it hovers there, staring balefully at the two silent figures. And then, slowly... Turns and glides away. Skipper. Yeah. You think you think the shark's gone? I don't know, Joe. Uh, let's get back to work. Now the two men move forward. Past compartment number seven. Ahead of them is an open hatch. A square door that may lead to death, to the dark cavern of compartment number eight. Somewhere inside that compartment, swallowed in the blackness is the unexploded demolition bomb. Slowly, Ellsberg inches his way through the hatch, his cumbersome diving suit making every delicate step a difficult maneuver. Hurley follows him. Joe. Yeah, Skipper. I think I see something. Move your leg to port. And watch it. Keep your lines clear of mine. Got you. Here comes the light. More. More. Wait a minute. Hold it now. Steady. Right where you are. Joe. Joe, there she is. I see her. Your gipper, she's as big as a table. Yeah, 200 pounder, I think. Okay, let's move in with the lines. Now watch your air hose. Don't fall it near that bomb. Right. Help me. Lash the lines around here, Joe. Then we're gonna swing. Now take it easy. No, don't jar. Okay, Skipper. Here you are. Here. Secure these lines. Don't worry, slipping out of this cradle halfway up. Now look outside. Outside here. You ready, sir? Pull us up, Jonik. Take it slow. We have to got this baby all the way out. Okay. Keep round. Easy now. Easy. We're almost at the hatch. Get my look out. She's swinging for the bulk hand. Stop side. Come back, Stephen. Starting the back, Stephen. Hold on to it, Joe. Hold it. Hold it. Are you okay, sir? We're coming. 
coming up. Get Thornton's men ready to handle this baby when we surface. And tell him to take it easy. This is 200 pounds of hair triggered bet. <laughs> Out of yellow dust, Thornton. Good thing we exploded that bomb out here in the desert. You're right, sir. Well, come on, let's get back to Masawa. We'd better. Now, what's, the, what's, what's with the wind all of a sudden? A part of Masawa's dubious charm, sir. We call them desert sandals. They're not serious. Well, we better head for town. Johnny, you all set? Wait a minute, sir. Come on, Thornton, let's wait in the Jeep. Well, we better hurry back and raise that dry dock. Eh. Uh... It's, it's going to be quite a load to haul up with a crane. How do you propose doing it, Captain? We don't. She's too big to budge with a crane. Let's go, Johnny. But uh, if you can't haul her up... We'll float her up. But, but there are holes in the bottom of seven of the compartments. Well, lucky for us. No holes in the sides. But uh, I still don't understand... Now, look, this. Thornton. Imagine a tin can with a hole in one end of it. It's sitting on the bottom of a lake. If you put air under pressure in that can, it pushes the water out. And then what happens? Oh, I suppose the can rises to the surface. <laughs> oh, I see. Exactly. Hurley, come on, on the double. Right, sir. That's right, Doctor. Just eight big tin cans. We run air hoses down and start pumping. As soon as she floats to the surface, we patch those holes in the bottom of each compartment and she'll stay on top. It's a tricky job, but... Say, this wind's picking up. Does it ever get worse than this? Occasionally, yes, Quite a bit worse, in fact. Oh, that's great. Come on, you guys. I hadn't figured on wind to kick up waves. We're going to have enough trouble without that. All set, Skipper. Good, good. Let's go. Sorry, we've got to beat this wind. Hurry. Yeah, yes, Skipper. You getting any more air bubbles from number four line? No, no, Johnny patched that leak. He just came up. Well, keep an eye on it. This wind has trouble written all over it. If our lines got fouled, we'll be right back where we started, on the bottom. Mr. Wilson, you wanted to be off Right. Excuse me, Captain. Thurley, how's your pressure reading? Uh, low on number seven line. Give me ten on number seven. Johnny. Aye, sir. What about number four line? Well, I, I think the bats will hold, sir. Well, I hope the weather will. Look at that sky. Back home, we'd call this perfect tornado weather. Skipper, the waves are kicking up. Well, those lines have got to hold. Hurley, how's your pressure? Well, we're still in business. I don't know for how long. These lines could part any minute. Well, lash down the compressors. No matter what happens, keep on pumping. Captain Ellsberg. Yes, what is it, Thornton? Just received an urgent message, sir, from Alexandria. Oh, what's up? It's the British fleet headquarters, sir. One of those four cruisers. Huge hole in the bow. They can't carry on without repairs. They want to know if... They can come in here. Here? Masawa? Well, how soon? They're only making one-third speed. They can limp here in 48 hours. Want to know if we can undertake repairs as soon as they arrive? 48 hours? All right, Thornton. Radio them to come in. We'll be ready for them. Aye, aye, sir. 48 hours? Skipper, you're sucking for a miracle. Well, call it what you like, Joe. That's what we're going to get. <laughs> All the foreman here? Yes, sir. Now get this. I know this heat's murder. I know we can't keep going in it, but we will. From now on, this operation goes on a 24-hour round-the-clock schedule. And we carry on to that dock close to the surface. And after that, we keep going till she's seaworthy. Now, that means everybody. So, tell that to your men and let's get to work. <laughs> She's coming up. Stand clear, man. Stand clear. Yeah, she's floating. Get her. She's floating. Okay. You did it, Captain Alfred. You've done it. She's floating, sir. She's on top and floating. But she won't stay afloat unless we get those holes patched up and fast. Now, keep that air pressure steady. Johnny, get your repair crew set. We start to work on compartment number one. Take them in turn. Let's go. Uh, Skipper, 
I've been through some nightmares in my life, but this job wins the prize. Well, here's your prize, really. Yeah, what is it? A salt tablet. Oh. Can you spare it? Captain Elfrag. Yes, what is it, Thornton? Here. Take a look through my binoculars. Well, what's up? Look toward the mouth of the harbor. Well, I still... What is it, Skipper? Yeah. How about it, sir? Are we ready? Can we handle the job? Yes, we're ready, Thornton. From here on, we can handle anything that can make it in. Masala's back in business for good. And so, two months from the day he landed at Masawa, Edward Ellsberg, now Rear Admiral, had completed the impossible. He had established the vitally needed naval repair station. And from there on, naval history was made. One after another, crippled ships limped into Mosawa and steamed out again full speed ahead. In time to launch the great November offensive in North Africa that turned the tide of World War II. to Robert Preston and the Cavalcade players for tonight's true story. Now, Bill Hamilton, speaking for the DuPont Company. We have learned to expect heroic deeds from the men who go down to the sea in ships, as in the story we just heard. Here is another such episode. Last July, a bad fire broke out on the dock of a West Coast oil refinery and rapidly spread to a tanker that was unloading. The captain realized that if his cargo exploded... It would play havoc, not only with his ship, but also with people working nearby on the shore. He called for volunteers to help him take the ship out into open water. And when the burning tanker was anchored offshore, all hands manned the fire hoses. Observers on the dock could see black smoke pouring out of the bow and greedy flames licking the edge of the boat deck where the brave men stood. It seemed impossible for anyone to remain there long, but the firefighters stood their ground and saved their ship. An important factor in saving the tanker was the material that covered the boat deck. This material, a cement composition containing neoprene, DuPont's man-made rubber, was put there to provide a non-skid surface and to protect the steel deck against corrosion. Fortunately, the material also proved to be flame-resistant. Neoprene, the first general-purpose synthetic rubber made in the United States, was manufactured in 1931 after years of research by DuPont scientists. Neoprene is particularly resistant to attack by petroleum products, oxygen, and sunlight. That's why it is used on oil tankers, in the oil fields, and around refineries. On a burning tanker, it helped to save the lives of valiant men, to say nothing of vessel and cargo. Neoprene is one of the DuPont company's better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by Robert Mason Pollock based on material from the book Under the Red Sea Sun by Rear Admiral Edward Ellsberg and published by Dob Mead and Company. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Boy. The program was directed by John Zoller. This is Cy Harris reminding you to be with us next week when the DuPont Cavalcade will present Dangerous Mission, the story of a daring raider and a lucky spy. Our star will be McDonald Carey. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you from the Velasco Theater in New York City and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. CD was transcribed. Stay tuned for comedy with Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis on NBC.